Hey guys, Ajax22 here, and uh, building up a couple of the Black Aces uh, Mossberg 500 receivers. Uh, just uh, wanted to walk through the process. Um, I buy these in gold um, just because I think the gold anodizing comes off easier than the black anodizing. Um, and yeah, they're the same price. No real reason to do it otherwise. Um, I think on these I'm going to blast them off um, using a new technique, um, at least in part. I'm going to go with the uh, generic oven cleaner, see that strip them off, uh, knock the pins out, pull the little blocks, and then uh, hose them down. And then once they're thoroughly saturated and well and truly um, you know, etched in, I've actually got a vibratory tumbler filled with a uh, fairly fine medium. I'm going to throw those in and see if we can get it to scrub the insides of the passageways and everything without having to do all the extra, you know, hand work with the scouring pads. So this is uh, a little bit new. I think I'm going to go wood furniture, probably scrounge up um, some 590 aluminum trigger groups for these. And then, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling some like a pair of bird's heads. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah, feeling a pair of bird's head or wood grips, um, probably wood forends. I've got an idea for forends using some brass tubing. Um, crazy idea. Not sure if it's going to work. Um, probably a lot of extra legwork. I'm going to take over the black aces markings here. Um, that's not make, model, or serial number. So, um, you know, I'll get rid of that. Um, and then uh, see where we go from there. These are pretty cool. Um, if you guys don't have some of these already, you need to grab them uh, while they're still 100 bucks. These, by all rights, should be a lot more. Uh, you can take one of these and $100 knockoff Mossberg, you know, New Haven or something, throw them together, throw them together and have, you know, a seven dollars $800 gun. Easy. Um, easy. You know, the... Uh, the quality of these things is, is pretty good. Uh, a lot of fit and finish issues and getting them to feed reliably is a, you know, a little bit of a challenge, but there's some workarounds for that. And, uh, I guess I'll, I'll sort of walk you guys through that as I go through it. So, um, going to go hose it down and see what happens. Um, yeah, that's about it for now. All right. Peace. Okay guys, uh, just wanted to quickly show you some of the sketches uh, illustrating what I was talking about earlier. Um, this is sort of what I was going to go for, um, you know, skeletonized um, magazine, um, you know, bird's head pistol grip, uh, aluminum trigger guard, uh, want to do some sort of a shroud on, on, on this, uh, and then... Um, actually gonna do a brass replacement rod for the mag tube which will be a lot of fun um, I'm thinking doing a chainsaw grip using uh, brass and making the well brass plate and wood grips it should be should be pretty cool I did some more some more detailed drawings um, yeah I want to I want to do a takeoff on the original uh, shroud uh, basically take the, the existing Mossberg metal shroud uh, that is perforated up to about here and then uh, take two of them, cut one, weld it to the other, you know, polish it out so that it's seamless and make sure that the holes line up. Um, this tube will be a, a solid bar of brass that I'm going to actually have to do another, another detail on, but it will be scalloped out from the sides uh, and drilled through. Um, It'll uh, be heavier, but that way I can integrate a feed ramp into the um, into the tube and uh, make it work that way. In theory, it, it's it might get a little more complicated in practice. Um, magazine is skeletonized. Uh, it's the CSS Products Steel Saiga um, Saiga 12 mag. Uh, you know, just drill, drilling out uh, using an annular cutter 
and, and just punching holes in the side of the mag. Um, in theory, so you can see how many rounds you have left, but in reality, it's it's just uh, for an aesthetic purpose. Um, yeah, here's a here's a closer detail of the grip. I was thinking of the front grip. I was thinking about using one of the uh, Mossberg 500 barrel uh, 50 cal muzzle loader lugs, and then having that um, as a cleaning rod location. But I've got mixed feelings on that. I like the way it looks. I don't know that I like the, uh, I mean, it just might, it might not be functionally practical. Um, and while I'm not usually one to get hung up on, you know, excessive focus on the functionality, it's, uh, it still has to, has to work. And I don't know if I'm feeling that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna use wood fore end inlet the sides for a brass plate, um, bolt the brass to the steel tube. Um, actually, probably weld studs onto the steel tube that go out through. Well, I don't know. That would require cutting the wood and then um, welding it on so that it, like the wood foregrip actually clamped on using the same mounting studs. I don't know if I really want to go that route. Uh, but I do like the idea of having a uh, chainsaw grip um, ability on the on the charging handle, and then just using upper get a 50 BMG wood handle for the upper upper grip. Um, yeah. I think that's all the sketches that I have on uh, on this at the moment. But uh, it should be pretty straightforward. So uh, let's uh, let's get to get to doing it. All right, guys. Here's the technique we're using this go around. Um, stuck them in a bucket and just hosing it down. Move it around a little bit. This hopefully will let us conserve the use of the uh, oven cleaner a little bit because they do tend to get um, you do get a little carried away if you're just doing it on exposed ground. Plus the uh, anodizing gets fucking everywhere. Hard language, but if ever there was an expletive needed to describe this stuff getting everywhere. Yeah, that's a that's a good expletive moment. Um anyway, gonna add some water to gonna let this sit as is for a second, add some water to it, let it sit again, and then uh, go prep the vibratory media and the tumbler and see if we see what happens when we, you know, try to do some actual technology and labor saving. So, gonna give it a go. All right, guys. Um, this is the vibratory tumbler setup. It's, uh, you know, your standard uh, Dillon Precision FL Magnum FL 2000B vibratory tumbler. Hopefully, I've actually never used this thing. I got it specifically for doing this, and this is the first go around. So, we will see how it actually works, but. It should be filled up with walnut inside there, with plenty of room for receivers of those dimensions to freely spin around. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, uh, lighting being provided to you by the display cabinet that I've been working on for the uh, for some of the toys. Yeah, so on to it. Okay guys, sorry about the low light. Um, just wanted to let you know, uh, ran into a little bit of an issue while spraying this stuff in, uh, one-upping the, uh, the prior dose. Uh, having it confined within a bucket seems to be giving a bit of a peltier effect. Um, so it's, it's kind of blowing back uh, the sodium hydroxide when you're doing it. I thought I was going to be able to get away with uh, running barehanded on this. Um, really bad idea. I can already kind of feel the burn, so I've been I've been scrubbing it off. Um, but uh, yeah, so protective gear, protective gear, protective gear. Uh, don't screw around with this stuff. Uh, not really something to cut corners on, even if it is just household cleaners. Um, and yeah, the bucket really enhances the amount of uh, splashback. Um, I, I usually don't feel anywhere near this amount of tingle 
on exposed skin when I'm blasting the, uh, the oven cleaner on it. So that's a thing. Be aware. All right, back to it. All right, guys. Um, been soaking in the bucket uh, for a little while, and then we added some water to bring it up so that it was hydroxide solution, which will be, you know, low, lower concentration, but cover everything uniformly. And then pulled it out, rinsed it off, and I'm throwing it in. Doesn't look like there's a lot that's visibly done. It's not like usually when you soak the stuff in the pure solution. So I'm kind of curious to see what uh, what happens here. So dig her in a little bit. Looks like it's gonna fit just fine. And then, uh, lid goes on. Thing goes on, and then we'll fire it up. I'll uh, turn this back on when we power everything up, so that you can see the hellacious noise, or the reasonable noise, depending on how how bad this actually is. All right. See you in a All right. Here you go. Really not bad. Um, you might be able to see actually watch it while it's working if this doesn't make. Okay, that's a bad idea. to any good gun projects make sure you clean that up before anybody notices all right I'm gonna let this run and uh, see what happens give it an hour um, well actually let's give it 20 minutes stranger things have happened all right see you soon all right guys 20 minutes is up in the vibratory tumbler and here's a control um, untouched receiver and here is the one that's been in for 20 minutes. Uh, as you can see, it's got more of a red tone. That's sort of the, the tone it usually takes when it starts um, having the anodizing strip off. And you can see around some of the higher edges, it's starting to turn white. It doesn't look like there's any sort of erosion going on. Uh, looks pretty straightforward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back in for the rest of the night. Um, this one, um, ends in 55, so that'll be the first one that's, uh, in the dip, or in the, uh, vibration. I'm gonna go pull the other one out here in another little bit, and throw it and the latches in, um, but, yeah, this is gonna go all night, so... Hopefully, the next video you guys see will be a comparison of the control unit and two others that are completely stripped, because why not? Alright, be right back. One thing to notice, I just pulled out the other one to throw it in. Um, 57 here is very, very, um, I mean the anodizing is a lot farther along in the stripping process. so. Probably a good idea to just leave these things in the dip, but I want to see what the vibratory thing does overnight. So I'm going to throw this one in now and see what happens. But uh, yeah, leaving it in the dip longer uh, makes a big difference. Big difference. All right, we've had this in for about uh, seven hours, I want to say. Uh, hmm. All right. Interesting. It does look like some of the anodizing's come off. It's definitely been shifting color. Um, this looks like the first one that went in. Yeah, this is a uh, five seven. What have we got in the other? Yeah. Definitely going to need more chemical stripping. There's no way around it. 
Now let's go get this into some even lighting so we can see what's actually going on here. All right, well you can sort of tell um, what's going on here by the uh, progression, the control unit of course, and then this is the one that spent the least amount of time in the dip, and this one spent you know, another hour or two. You can see the um, anodizing is coming off, but it's low and it looks like it's not mechanically scrubbing it enough. So we need to uh, chemically strip it. So these are going back in the dip and we're going to leave it in there for, um, I'm going to say, two hours. Uh, this is going to be the same uh, water and sodium hydroxide mix that was used last night. So hopefully it, uh, it should dis dissolve the anodizing without dissolving the aluminum. That's, uh, that's the hope. Then once that's sort of going, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll put it back in the, in the buzzer and, uh, do the, uh, do the vibratory tumbling again. All right, back to it. All right, we've had these in the dip for around four hours now, and as you can see, they've started just stripping right away. Um, haven't run it through the vibratory medium at all. This is just what rinsing it off and tossing it in the thing looks like. Um, I'm gonna go runner. It looks like, um, well, the tones are hard to, hard to make out here, but it looks at like 5.5 five is not as stripped as 5.7 which I suppose to be expected. Um, gonna see how well the insides shape up. We'll run these for, ooh, I don't know, somewhere between three hours and the rest of the night, depending on whether or not I go out to dinner and come back or go elsewhere after dinner. Um, and then we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, definitely gonna go run it through the vibratory medium. It doesn't look like it's dissolving any of the aluminum or changing any of the tolerances. So I think we've, you know, one can of generic, uh, of an off, a generic <laughs> oven cleaner, easy off oven cleaner, um, to a half a bucket of water, around a gallon, a gallon and a quarter, uh, seems to be a good mix for not destroying these things, but still getting good, um, good stripping. Um, first time that I've used it diluted with water and it, it really seems to be saving a lot of elbow grease. So I'm not putting any manual agitation to this at all. It's strictly let it soak, throw it in the thing. Let it soak, throw it in the thing. Uh, just wipe it down with a, a wash with a, a paper towel to make it so that I can set it on the wood without destroying the wood. Um, anyway, gonna go run them. All right. All right, guys, had it running in the tumbler for quite a while now, and let's see what we got. Well, it's uh, more aluminum-ish, but it looks like it's just taking the loose stuff off. Hard to say on the inside. Um, I'll go put it back in the same lighting as before so we can get a real comparison. <laughs> One second. All right, as you can see, it's done a halfway decent job in the tumbly media of getting the stuff out um, better than it was on the inside. So what the uh, next step is going to be another uh, go around with the chemical stripping and then I think that after this, one blast in the ultrasonic, or sorry, the uh, tumbler should just about get it clean. Um, yeah, interesting. It's usually a lot more marked with the mechanical agitation as to where the anodizing is still bonding, but it kind of looks like this still has a uh, slight overall gold hue to it. Anyway, I'm going to go throw them in the dip, and we'll be right at it. Alright guys, here we are. These have been soaking for a little while, and as you can see, the anodizing um, is coming off. 
uh, what, what little was left. Here, don't do this. But you can see, just wipes off. I'm gonna go take these, uh, rinse them real quick, uh, wash my hands, and uh, throw these back in the vibratory tumbler to see what they wind up looking like. So, be right back. Well, it seems to be working. Uh, chemicals do seem to be doing a lot more, but this is kind of getting a nice, uh, even dull finish without having any marks on it. So uh, I'm still digging the methodology. Probably more of a final polish than anything else. Uh, I'm gonna throw it back in the dip. Maybe increase the uh, the uh, concentration a tiny bit. Anyway. Gonna gonna do these. Also gonna grab some uh, Mozzie 500 receivers that I've got kicking around and see what happens to one that's already been stripped pretty far. Uh, yeah, get right on it. All right, guys, uh, got one of the random Mossberg uh, 500s that I did with uh, just hand work, and you can see it leaves a lot of uh, scum inside it. So I'm gonna try throwing it in the. Uh, in the, the vibratory tumbler and seeing what happens. Uh, I've got a ton of these things kicking around that uh, from parts from parts donors and, and other things so uh, you know not really worried about it and if it does happen to work then there's a, a bunch more that can be nice and shiny it would be kind of fun to do like a, a rack of uh, pistol grip only Mossberg 500 so throw it in turn it on see what happens. We'll be back to the real project here in a second. Hey guys, uh, the uh, test Mozzie 500 receiver just uh, is coming out. Looks pretty decent. Um, got a little bit more of the black stuff off, and it gives it a nice uh, semi-polished. It's not, you know, matte. It's not polished. It's somewhere in between on the finish. Um, probably oxidized real nice and smooth uh, from here on. Anyway, I'm gonna go throw this together with, along with uh, two other receivers stripped with two other methods that I had kicking around, and we'll have um, you know a comparison. Um, yeah, for uh, to identify this one, this one was the uh, Revelation 310 AB, um, ending in 65. So I'll throw this together and, and see what happens. All right, guys. Um, here working on the uh, little random leftover Mossberg bits. Um, this is the one that we uh, just pulled out of the uh, polisher. As you can see, it's got a little bit more of a even finish. Uh, still has some some chemical stripping that needs to happen to it, but the outside comes out pretty nice. Um, this one here was done with a uh, Scotch-Brite, uh, a lot of me mechanical action. Uh, it was sort of the standard that I was going for on uh, on this one. A um, lot of handwork, um, but the inside is still a little rough. And then this one was one where I tried to cut some corners and I used a uh, Fordham tool with uh, brass bits to try to mechanically scrub it. And this one, um, you know, I don't like the finish. It looks a little more post-apocalyptic, but uh, yeah. So, is what it is. I, I do like the way the uh, ultrasonic finish is is going on these. Um, this one had some marks on it, um, similar to the similar to this one, but. Uh, yeah, it seems to have taken them off pretty nice. Uh, it wasn't anything significant, but um, it did leave a nice even finish. So, yeah, um, I got uh, the the uh, gold receivers finished stripping there. Uh, I did a direct application. I think I'm gonna do a mechanical um, scotch brighting just to uh, try to get in the nooks if it uh, well we'll see how it comes out after the after the last go around dries on them and uh, I think it might actually be getting some black oxide scale which um, the ultrasonic seems pretty good at at knocking off so it may just be the kind of thing that you need to over apply 
the oven cleaner to the anodized surfaces repeatedly and then um, you know just toss it in the ultrasonic to knock the black scale it forms off um, yeah should be pretty straightforward but um, you know until we get the exact methodology right it's still a decent amount of handwork and I'd really like to avoid doing that because I've got a, a decent pile of uh, these things to go through. I actually think I have another uh, five or so receivers that I'm stripping the anodizing off because why not? Um, they're Mossberg 500 receivers. They're, you know, essentially free with the parts for the gun. Um, I mean, especially these, you know, old Revelations and New Havens and, um, you know, fill in the fill in the blank. There, there's a bunch of bought, made by Mossberg guns that are kicking around. That you can buy all day long for a hundred bucks, and the barrel for a Mossberg is like a hundred and twenty. So, if you're if you're building, um, you know, gold parts guns, uh, can't hard to go wrong with it. Plus, you know, you can take the the old wood stocks and cut them up, and then you know, sand them down into much more interesting pistol grips, uh, bird's head pistol grips than you can you can actually buy. Um, you know, some of the old wood's much more interesting than what's even commercially available for new wood. Um, so yeah, just one of the greatest uh, deals currently in firearms is, is these old New Haven Mossberg knockoffs. Um, I'd stay away from the Mavericks, everybody who's looking for a cheap, um, you know, polymer furniture. Mossberg 500 grabs a Maverick 88 and honestly, uh, they're not made as well as the uh, the New Havens and the the Revelations and you know, I have a list somewhere. There's a bunch of different types um, A bunch of them so figure out what the model numbers are and go scrounge them up but uh, Yeah, you know hundred bucks a pop sometimes you can get them even cheaper. Uh, I've seen them you know, in, in bulk lots with a, a little thing wrong here or there for, you know, 60 bucks. Um, and, you know, you're, you're not going to get a trigger group and a barrel for 60 bucks. Um, you're not also, you may, may not be able to use all the parts uh, in the in the gold guns. There's two different types of bolts. Um, well, there's more than two different variants of bolts, but there's two main uh, different types. Uh, one of which works with the uh, Black Aces receivers. You're going to need to steal the... Uh, ejectors or I guess extractor the ejector um, and the the locking block I guess um, the sliding plate you won't need there's two different types of uh, or actually three different types of uh, locking block only one of which will actually work so you might wind up getting stuck for that but hey you know worst case scenario you wind up with a pile of Mossbergs um, and this is this is not even a fraction of, of the pile of Mossbergs. They're they're I never liked them. Um, I was a Mossberg hater for years because the 870 is such a great gun. But uh, you know, once the Black Aces receivers came around, um, you know, I just had to dig out the piles of Mossbergs and tinker on them. And I mean, they just you know having having a detachable magazine. For a, a Mossberg 500 is just awesome. I mean, you just can't go wrong, especially these CSS products, uh, steel mags, which are just wonderful. Um, plus, on these, you can you can modify the mags directly if you uh, don't want to mod the mag tubes. You can weld a little uh, feed ramp on the front of them, and then you don't have to deal with the, the glued-on stuff that the Black Aces recommends, or use the Black Aces proprietary mags. I really like the steel, um, and avoid plastic whenever possible. Um, I mean, pistol grips on cheap beater guns aside, um, you know, kinda, kinda hard to beat the bang for the buck. Anyway, um, I'm gonna get back to it. I think the next thing you're gonna see is likely either these coming out of the ultrasonic, or uh, some more of the gold receivers, um, you know, coming coming out of the the stripping. Um, either way, it'll probably be like 12 hours from now or so. So I'm gonna actually attempt to get some sleep and tinker. Uh, well, maybe tinker than sleep, something of that nature. But for you, no time will pass. All right.
be right back. All right, guys. Uh, here's where we're at. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, um, just based on the color saturation here, but we've gotten through most of the anodizing on the receivers, um, some more than others. It looks like the reusing the water is is starting to pay significantly diminishing uh, returns. It almost looks like the pigment is kind of just been pulled out um, of the of the units here and that they are uh, you know starting to kind of picking up a little bit more of it from from continuing to soak so what i'm going to do is lay them out here hit them with the the pure stuff and uh see what happens um should be you know one good stripping worth um and then we'll hit it with the uh the, the vibratory tumbler so um yeah should uh, should hopefully be another you know hour of this um, with the intense concentrated stuff and then we'll be good all right on to it all right just uh, got done running these receivers uh, for you know around 24 hours uh, seems to have stripped quite a bit of the anodizing uh, still some of the inside but what we're going to do is take the scouring pad side of the sponge and try it manually because I think a lot of this might just be on the surface. It also appears that um, the walnut holes have kind of gotten this dust that's been uh, ground into the aluminum a little bit and it needs to just be scrubbed down, cleaned up. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick, see what happens and see just uh, what sort of state these things are in. All right, be right back. Okay guys, um, did a little bit of uh, very light scouring pad work on these just to get the, the I don't know what you'd call it, the, the ground up dust from the, from the vibratory tumbler off of it. It had actually gotten embedded in the pores of the aluminum a little bit. They look a little better um, in uh, the camera light than they do in person right now. There's, I can still tell the anodizing is, is there in a couple of the, especially the corners and the nooks the little edges here you can really see it in person but it's not showing up on the camera um, yeah needs to be blasted again um, in, the, in the little vibratory tumbler but uh, yeah, it's not it's not horrible uh, I mean I could actually probably just start building at this point and uh, you know, trust that uh, nature will start stripping the rest of it. But, uh, you know, that's... Eh, part of the fun of having the toys is having the toys. Um, this one's uh, 55, this one's 57. So, um, coming out pretty decent, gotta say. A lot less work than I'm used to. For doing the, uh, the the scrubbing, the anodizing off, so I'm I'm happy. Anyway, uh, guess I'll I'll get back to it. I'm gonna throw them back in the vibratory tumbler, see what we can uh, what we can make happen. And uh, while I'm at it, I threw I think another five or so uh, Mossberg 500 receivers into the chemical strip just to see. Um, how that works and maybe throw together a few more of those uh, silver receiver pistol grip only um, something to do anyway um, be back in a second